up potty people and welcome back to my channel so i think today's video is gonna be my last video that i post before christmas it's the 17th right now it's a week before christmas and i don't really see a need in posting like around christmas eve or christmas day just because i feel like it wouldn't get watched so what's the point so yeah i think this is gonna be my last video before christmas so merry christmas but yeah today i want to do a chit chat get ready with me and kind of get a little more personal with like life updates updates on my pregnancy on my dad my family just whatever comes to mind i don't really have a strict organized plan for what I want to talk about today. I'm just, I'm just gonna let it flow. So yeah, we're just gonna get right into it. I think I'm gonna create more of like a Christmassy inspired look so that if you want to rock something like this for the holidays, for your family get togethers, you can do it. You have a little inspiration. So if you like videos like this where we get a little more personal and just kind of branch away from makeup a little bit, then make sure you give it a thumbs up to let me know that you want to see more like it. Subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you guys stick around and join my community and make sure you turn that notification bell on to never miss an upload from you because so many people tell me on a daily basis that they're not seeing my videos and their news feed and without further ado let's get a little personal and just let's just play and make up together so you'll have to excuse me because i get out of breath very easily like just by talking like it sounds like i've run a marathon or something so <laughs> pregnancy so i guess that's a good place to start so in case you didn't know which i feel like i feel like almost everybody knows at this point but I'm pregnant! So yeah, I'm actually gonna be 21 weeks this Thursday. So today's Tuesday. So in two more days, I'm gonna be 21 weeks. So we are having a girl and our expecting date is April 30th, 2020. And I'm just so excited. Like I've wanted this for such a long time, but honestly, I kind of get to a point where I forget that I'm pregnant sometimes because I've had almost zero negative side effects from it. like I've had no morning sickness. I had nausea between week six and week nine, just kind of here and there. So I was thinking that whenever I got pregnant, like I wouldn't have a good experience. It wouldn't be very fun. And turns out it has been such a breeze and I've been so happy and I don't, I definitely don't have the pregnancy glow. Like a, a few of you guys have said in, in videos like, oh, you have the pregnancy glow. No girl, that's a glowy foundation. Like my skin, this is not glowy. My acne has been so bad. So that's probably been the worst side effect that I've had from pregnancy and just like the hormonal imbalances and change and stuff like that. Like my skin has been pretty much a pimple since February. So it's not just pregnancy, like it's just, it's hormones in general. And I take really good care of my skin. So that's, that, that's what's so funny about it. Like my skin is really normal right now. Like I'm not super oily. I'm not too dry. Like I usually am in the winter. My skin is very healthy, but I went off birth control in February and I've been on birth control since I was about 15 years old, 15 or 16 years old. I got on it for my, my periods because they were so brutal. And most of the things I read said that it takes about a month usually for it to get out of your system. Around the March, April point, that's when I started having really bad back knee especially. Like my back started breaking out first and I've never really had bad breakouts on my back. And it's starting to clear up now. Like it's definitely starting to kind of regulate a little bit, but now I'm left with the dark spots. So yeah, this was kind of the year for us that we decided to start trying to have a baby. We, we've done things very traditionally. Like we've done things very much in the order of how we feel like you should do things. We want to be financially stable. We want to go through all the right steps, you know, in living together and being married for a little while. And for some reason, he always had it in his head that 27 was his number. 27 would be the time in his life when he would be stable with a job. He would be financially secure and all that stuff. And like everything would be perfectly aligned. I've just been telling him like, nothing's ever perfect. Like when are you ever, 100% ready to be responsible for another life. Like I don't, I don't really feel like anyone is. I mean, you never know what's gonna happen from day to day. You could lose your job, you could lose your home. Um, and then fast forward, actually we don't really fast forward at all. In February, when we decided that we were gonna start trying and that I would come off birth control, my dad found out that he was sick. His experience and what he's gone through could really be a learning lesson for a lot of people and you know taking better care of yourself and going for regular checkups and not always putting work first my dad has always put work first the only day that he's ever missed of work is the day that i was born in 1994. my dad's a truck driver but he's an independent contractor so he has no benefits whatsoever he doesn't get paid leave he doesn't get vacation unless like the you know the actual facility shuts down which it does you know in the summer and then around christmas time so my dad just let his health just kind of slip by because he put work first. I think that's the biggest lesson of all. In your work, in your job, you're expendable. Like you're so easily replaceable. They don't care if you get sick. But back in October or November of 2017, he started noticing this big like bulging thing on his neck. And he had had swollen lymph nodes before, like in that area, and they would just go away. But 
around that time, like it started getting bigger and bigger and it just didn't go away. And it was getting to the point where it was causing discomfort. Like whenever he turned his head, it would kind of crick. It was to the point where he was actually concerned. And my dad doesn't, he doesn't usually get concerned about stuff. Like he's the type that if you tell him to go to the doctor, he's just like, no, I'm, I'm fine. No, I'm not gonna go to the doctor. No, just get over it. Like he's very, very stubborn and super overbearing. And I would tell him like, dad, just go get it checked. Like it could be nothing, but it could be something. Like you need to go get it checked. And he refused. So he finally went to the doctor. And then in February, on actually on February, 12th because I remember this because it was my husband's birthday. My mom called me and said they think it's a tumor. They think it's cancer. And it didn't hit me until we got off the phone. Whenever you hear the word cancer, like it's, it's just, it's such a, a triggering word. Like you just think death. All I could think about was, you know, all these childhood memories and the fights that we got in and, you know, I started feeling guilty. It was just, it was like I was out of my body. And whenever we got off the phone, I just kind of sat there for a little bit and, uh, my husband was next to me. I was like, they, they think he's got cancer. And whenever I said it out loud, like when I, when I actually said it, that's when I realized what had just been told to me. I just, I went into full blown like panic attack, like hyperventilating and whew, stop. They wouldn't tell us anything until March. So for four weeks, we were sitting around not knowing if it was cancer, not knowing if he would even make it to the next appointment. Like, is it stage four? Is he dying? Like, what's going on? Like, they, they just, they don't get in a hurry at all to tell you what's wrong with you. Like, they'll tell you, yeah, it's serious. There's something wrong with you, but they won't tell you what it is. And it's just, it's the worst, most terrible, nightmarish feeling that you could ever have. But we found out in March, it was stage one head and neck cancer, and it was a form of squamous cell carcinoma. I always thought squamous cell carcinoma wasn't like a, a form of skin cancer, but apparently it's, it's just a type of cancer in general, but it was in his neck and it couldn't be cut out. Like it wasn't something that could be surgically removed. It would have to be basically radiated. So they determined that he would need to have seven weeks of radiation and then three sessions of chemo. So from day one, whenever he first started, he had one chemo session and then also he, he started his radiation. So every three weeks from then on out, he had to have a chemo treatment along with the radiation five days a week. They told us that for the first couple of weeks, like for the first maybe two or three weeks, he should be able to go about normal life, you know, go to work and probably wouldn't be as negatively affected by the treatment yet. But my dad was sick from day one, like from the first day of chemo and radiation, it was nothing but ne negative side effects. Like he was sick from the time that he got home. It was literally the worst thing I've ever watched. And you know, I've always heard about the side effects of chemo and radiation and stuff, but until you actually see someone in the flesh experiencing it, you have no clue. So yeah, you hear about all these cancer stories and experiences and stuff like that. And it's just like, oh my God, that's that's horrible. Wow, that's that's awful. But you move on. Like it's not you, it's not happening to your family. It's not happen to, it's happening to you. So I think it's something that we all just kind of push out of our heads and it's not real until it's real. I've always looked at my dad as being invincible. Like he's, <clears throat> he's always been like the, the toughest, strongest person I've ever known. And, you know, like I said, he, ne he never would get sick. He's always been very, very healthy, but he'd been losing weight for a while. My dad's always been, you know, a pretty, not hefty, but he's never been like a super, super skinny guy. Like he's always been kind of meaty. Like I'll put a picture of him over here. This is from like 94 or something like that. And to see him wither away to nothing, he dropped, I think, I think the lowest that he got was around 137, 135. He got extremely little. And like, he, he, he looked like he had aged 25, 30 years. And that's really, really hard to watch. And I, like, I gotta hand it to my mom. Like between the two of them, they are the toughest people I've known. Like my mom emotionally and mentally is so tough. And to watch someone, like it's, it's hard enough when you're the person actually going through it physically. Like I, I can't imagine what my dad was going through. Like, I know how hard it was for him and I, I pity and have such a high amount of sympathy for what he went through. Like I understand, but I also don't understand because I didn't go through it. But my mom sat there and watched him and took care of him day in and day out and saw this entire process unfold. To have to take care of someone going through that, but not knowing how to take care of them, not knowing how you can help them because there really is no way to help them. My mom deserves the freaking world. And he didn't have a super advanced cancer or anything. Like it wasn't super aggressive. It was, they act like pretty easily treatable. Um, but it's, you know, we were worried and my dad was worried 
about the actual treatment. Um, you know, and he, he kept saying, like, I don't know if I can do this. And he started losing hope. He got extremely depressed and angry at everything. And you could tell he didn't know if he would actually make it. Which is really hard because everyone knows their own limits. For me and my mom, like, we were forced to be positive And uh, we were forced to be optimistic and hopeful. But it was awful because he was only supposed to have treatment for seven weeks total. And then midway around week four, week five, something like that, all the equipment shut down in the hospital that he was going to. Like, I, we had heard afterwards that hackers had hacked in and had shut down the equipment and were holding it for ransom. And apparently that's something that get done to hospitals all the time. I had no idea. It was, I think it was two weeks that he didn't have any radiation or chemo. Like, it took nine weeks for him to completely get done with, it, with everything. You know, he started getting better and started getting his taste buds back, and then he had to go back to chemo and radiation again. So, that was awful but he got done with his treatments in June. And I think we all kind of had unrealistic expectations for how long it would take him to get better because the doctors would you know they all say it can take up to a year or more to completely recover from just the cancer treatment but we thought that okay you know you're done now you're gonna start getting better but I mean he still has residual side effects from treatment but I mean doctors would tell us like like Chemo and radiation, cancer treatment in general, is still very experimental, so it could it's, it's a 50-50 chance. But I am so happy to say that he is cancer-free now, he's gaining weight, and he's doing a lot better, and he's not sick anymore. This entire year, like from February to, I don't know, September, it all just seems like a, like a dream. Like, it, it seems like, like, it's all a blur now. Like, while it was happening, you know, that's what we lived, breathed, slept, everything for. And now that it's over, it's just like, wow, did that really happen? I've always been a big believer in everything happens for a reason. But when this happened, when my dad got sick, it was the first time in a really long time that I questioned that. And now I can 100% say that everything does happen for a reason. Like, I firmly believe that now, like more than ever. As bad as it sounds, it's so unfortunate to say this, but good did come from his, him getting sick and him getting cancer. It's almost like it was a way to show us, to make us more appreciative of each other, to value our family more. Um, and my dad and I are closer than we have been in a really long time. Good did come from it, thank God, because I just, for all this to have happened and for something good to not have come from it, it would have been a waste. So at least a lesson was learned from it. I asked for a lot of prayers from you guys and that's another thing. Thank you all so much. I had so much support and positivity on my YouTube channel alone for my dad. And I would show I would show my mom and my dad all the prayers and all the support that, that was given. Just the thought of people actually caring and being concerned. It, it just it's it, it sparks a positivity in you. Like through this entire process, this was my safe haven. Like YouTube and seeing your all's positivity and your support and you all asking how my dad was doing and how I'm doing, how my family's doing, like that kept me going and gave me a sense of hope and optimism, not just in the situation, but just in humanity as a whole. Um, I've said this before, but you all, strangers who don't know me, don't know my family, you don't even know my mom and dad's name, you showed more concern for my family than people in my actual life that I expected to be there. The weird thing about someone getting sick or any kind of trauma in a family is that it really makes you realize who's there for you and who's not. Like who is your true blood, who's your true friends, all of that. There were so many people that I used to be close to, like friends that I used to be close to that I thought would, you know, even though we hadn't talked in a while, I thought they would come and they would, you know, hey, I heard about your dad, are you okay, is everything okay? That didn't. There were family members that never said anything at all. People steer away from you. Like people avoid the conversation. Like there were so many people that I would encounter that it's like, it was the elephant in the room. Like I know you know my dad's sick. I don't know if it's like people are afraid to make you emotional or you know, to put a damper on the, the day or something. I don't care if you ask how I'm doing, but at least ask how he's doing. Like, is he alive? It's, it's almost like they were afraid if they talked about it, then they would get it. <laughs> like, like it was contagious or something. It came across as so uninterested and just 
careless, thoughtless. It makes you see what's important in life and uh, kind of wakes you up a little bit, kind of kind of jars you a little bit to be like, okay, my eyes are open. I know what's important. I appreciate these people. I, I, I have more value for life. I appreciate life more. I appreciate my health more. Push yourself, push people that you love to go to the doctor. Get regular scans. If you have insurance, do it. No family member deserves to go through what my mom and I have gone through and no person deserves to go through what my dad went through. And just keep in mind, like my dad had stage one cancer that wasn't aggressive and he had to go through all the treatment that he went through. Think about if you let it go so long that you get stage three or stage four. Think about all the treatment that you'll have to go through at that point, if you even could go through treatment. So going back to getting pregnant, whenever my dad got sick, it kind of put it on hold a little bit. Like we were still trying, but it was almost like we were, we were kind of reserved. Like there was a wall, like, you know, we're trying, we want to have a kid and start a family, but at the same time, should we at this point? What if I do get pregnant? and you know, he's going through all this treatment and he doesn't make it. I cannot bring a kid into this world at this, at this point in time without my dad. I think my body knew that mentally I couldn't handle it and it just wasn't the right time. So I feel like it's such a miracle that we got pregnant when we did because we found out that we were pregnant and we got pregnant right after my dad was done with treatment. You know, he started getting better. There was finally starting to be a lot at the end of the tunnel and you know, I was less stressed out because this entire year has been nothing but stress. And then on top of my dad being sick for the entire year, my aunt died, we had death in the family. We almost couldn't even really grieve that because we had so much other stuff on our plates. So like my mom lost her sister and I feel like, I, like, I don't even think she fully grieved that because she couldn't, she didn't have time to. Like she was constantly like 24 seven taking care of my dad. Like I got to the point where I was kind of fearful of getting pregnant this year because I just thought nothing good's gonna come from this year. So, you know, do I want to even risk it? Just thought, you know, 2019 is hexed and turns out it ended up to be a pretty good year after all. We didn't really want to tell anybody until six weeks. Like we didn't want to tell anybody like outside of the family, like outside of our parents until 12 weeks, you know, the first trimester was over. So it worked out perfectly that around the time that I was six weeks, uh, it was grandparents day. So we did tell both of our both sets of parents on grandparents weekend that we were having a baby and they are all so excited which i mean why wouldn't they be <laughs> we've been married for three years and we've been together for 11. uh so uh, it's not like we we've only been dating for like a month or two but you know they were all kind of wanting it but we just we weren't really aware of them wanting it because it wasn't really something that we talked about a whole lot we're pretty private when it comes to our relationship like we 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 keep pretty much everything private. And it took a really long time for it to feel real. Like it's it's the weirdest thing. Like I guess especially because I didn't have any negative side effects. Like if I'd had morning sickness and all that, like I would, you know, it would definitely feel a lot more real. It's like, okay, you're making me sick. Like you're in there. But she's been such a little like calm, gentle angel. Like she just, she just seems like such a gentle soul. And it definitely is true that whenever you have a kid, it bonds you as a couple more than you ever could have imagined it would. Like I said, me and Bron have been get together for 11 years. So we've been together since 2008. I was in uh, ninth grade, he was in 10th, is that right? Oh my God, I'm actually starting to forget. That's how you know you're old when you start forgetting the years that you were in school. But yeah, I was 14, he was 15. But you can't imagine how much love you could possibly have for someone until you have a kid with them. I don't know, like seeing him in this role, like seeing him become a dad, it's, it's the, the craziest, most beautiful, amazing thing that I've ever seen. And I can't imagine loving him more than I do now, but I know that <laughs> that's gonna change. I am just so incredibly blessed and grateful and I'm, I'm happy, like I'm so happy. And seeing our family so happy for us and like so happy to become grandparents and you know, just, it, it, it's just, started out as a really, really bad year and it seems like it's ending on a good note. But I get so many comments on a regular basis ask, asking to see like my baby bump and to, you know, are you gonna start a pregnancy, sorry, I got a little bristle here. Uh, you know, are you gonna start a pregnancy vlog? And I know a lot of you guys just wanna get to know me. Like I feel like YouTube, in general is the kind of platform where you kind of bond with who you're watching. Like it's completely different than watching a TV show or a movie and feeling a connection to an actor. Like you, you really don't feel that connection with an actor the way you do with a content creator on YouTube. So I do get it, but me as a viewer, and this sounds so crude, but 
I don't really care to get to know people personally because I don't look at them as friends. So like channels that do videos like this a lot, like get more personal or vlog or whatever, like I really don't stay on board very long. Like it just kind of, that's not what I'm there for basically. But I also understand that there is a shift in the direction of the beauty community. Like it's transitioning, I think more into commentary opinion based style videos. So I do want to start doing more videos like that. So if you guys do want to see that, then let me know. But yeah, I just don't want to get away from what I started doing because I look at it as if you subscribe to me for my beauty content, you're going to stay because of my beauty content. So if I don't do that, then you have no reason to stay. Like I feel like honestly, viewers don't really know what they want. And as a creator, it's really hard to know what you all want because I don't think viewers even know what they want. And that's not to be like trashing viewers. Like I'm a viewer too. Like I'm not, I'm not just a creator. Like I look at myself more as a viewer than a content creator. Like we're kind of tired of seeing the same old stuff, but at the same time we're not. But you know, as a creator, you're getting comments. Like, for example, I get comments to do more tutorials. Okay. Well, I may get four or five comments asking for me to do more tutorials. And then when I do those tutorials, they don't get views. So, you know, you think that those four or five comments represent your entire audience, but it really doesn't. So you're, you're only appealing to a very small percentage of your, your viewership. You know, there's a lot of people that have been complaining about, um, you know, being tired of hearing about all the new stuff and, you know, tired of FOMO culture and tired of feeling pressured to buy all this stuff that you really don't need. But at the same time, videos about new makeup get better reviews and more engagement than uh, like a shop your stash video. You know, we're all just trying to figure it out. So yeah, you know, at first I was kind of reluctant to branch off and do what I think the, the shift is going towards, which is more commentary style videos in my opinion. I just feel like whenever you share your opinion, like the more you share, whenever it comes to like trolls, haters, whatever you want to call them. Um, it just kind of gives them ammunition. Like it kind of makes you a target. So I've been very reserved and very, very careful with, you know, not sharing too much of my personal life because I don't want anyone in my personal life to become a, a target. You know, I try not to share too many of my insecurities or my weaknesses or, you know, things that I don't like about myself because as soon as you do, that makes you a target for a bully and I just don't want to deal with it. I'm a very sensitive person and I really don't like the thought of someone not liking me. And I hate that about myself. Like it's, it's the biggest flaw I feel like I have. Like I care too much about what people think. I'm not really like, if you don't like what I'm wearing, I really don't care. Like if you don't like my makeup style or my hair or the way I talk or whatever, like I don't care about that stuff. But when it comes to like someone misinterpreting me, like someone misconstruing what I have to say or someone thinking that I'm a bad person when I know that I'm not, I know who I am. Like I'm, I can't say that I was like this three, four, five years ago. Like I've really grown. Like that, that's one good thing about YouTube. It's something that I never thought would be an advantage of being on YouTube, but it's made me more confident. Like it's made me have tougher skin. You know, I've really had to fake it till I make it like when, with confidence. And I think that's what you have to do. Like, you know, if you're not someone that's naturally confident, which most of us aren't, I, I feel like you really just have to fake it till you make it and just kind of like convince yourself that you should be confident. And you know, I know who I am. Like I know my heart. I know my mind. I know that I don't have bad intentions. Like I like who I am. And I've had the stupid desire, like the unrealistic desire of everyone being able to see through that. And every, everyone being able to see that I am a good person. That I'm not a bad person with malicious intent. But uh, unfortunately, <laughs> everyone has their own opinions. And everyone likes certain things and different people. Like everyone looks for certain characteristic traits. And some people just aren't gonna like you. Even before I knew that I would get past 10 subscribers, I kind of set in my mind that I'm not gonna share this, this, and this. Like I've always had the idea of keeping it very surface level because you don't know who's watching you. You don't know how evil or cruel someone is that's watching you. And something that you would think would be so innocent, like why was it, why would it matter if you shared that? It turns into something that can be used to attack you. I do have to kind of adjust and be flexible with the transition that is happening in the beauty community. Like I have to adjust with it or I'm just gonna be left in the dust. Like I'm not gonna grow because I'm just stuck in my ways and you know, stuck doing the same old stuff. If you don't get me, if you don't understand what type of person I am, like if you haven't figured out that I'm a good person and I don't have malicious intent and I'm not trying to be a sellout, then you know, you get it. But 
the ones who do do and the ones who don't don't as far as like a pregnancy series and stuff like that like i've had a lot of comments like a surprising amount of comments ask me if i'm gonna do a pregnancy series if i'm gonna do like if i'm gonna show my baby bump and stuff like that and as far as showing my baby bump I wouldn't normally like pull up my shirt and show my stomach if I weren't pregnant so it seems a little weird to do that now and again I just feel like that would open a lot of doors for people saying you just look fat I don't know to me that's just very personal and I think a lot of youtubers share too much with people like I feel like some things just need to be kept sacred and just need to be kept private like I look at a lot of these people who vlog their pregnancy and vlog their delivery or their wedding or whatever and it's just like nothing sacred anymore like you don't have to share all this with people and i feel like all these big life events become just debacles and it's almost just looked at as content even with like not even just with like youtubers but like with everyday people it's like everyone wants to live like a reality star like everyone wants to have everything filmed it's almost like people become more excited about the attention of like a certain life event like a wedding or an engagement or a pregnancy like people come wrapped up in that that excitement like that part of it and then like the actual excitement of the event itself it gets washed away you know it's just extra like <laughs> it just looks like so attention seeking it's almost this mentality of like if you don't record it like if you don't film it it's like it didn't happen and it's one thing if you you know film it for yourselves like there's a lot of things that brian and i filmed or like you know i filmed get togethers with my family and stuff like I, I do that for us like i do that for memories like for myself and like i keep it on my computer like i don't share it with facebook or with youtube or anything because it's special but yeah i won't be doing any kind of like pregnancy series or you know I, I probably won't be like showing my bump on instagram or something like that um, i honestly don't really have a big one right now like it doesn't really look like a bump it just looks like food fat and I hope you guys like the look that I created today I mean it wasn't exactly what I had in mind uh, I did want to do like a reddish gold kind of look with a red eyeliner so I mean it just kind of happened I honestly just kind of zoned out while I was talking and just threw some stuff on but I will have everything that I used today in the description box in the order of how I used it if you're interested in seeing what I did to get this look my skin looks super glowy right now so you would look at me like if this were just a normal video and you didn't see my skin from like before and after you would think oh my gosh she's got the pregnancy glow oh your skin no girl it's infallible pro glow from L'Oreal this <laughs> is this and my hard candy tiki highlighter that is what I've been rocking lately it is nothing more than that my skin looks horrendous so yeah I do hope that you guys enjoy this video and hopefully it wasn't too long but I feel like a lot of people are getting to the point where they actually like longer length videos so if you guys like videos like this, then please let me know. And if there are any topics in particular that you want me to cover in a video, whether it be a chit chat, get ready with me, or just you know a normal sit down commentary style video, let me know. So I hope you guys have a very, very Merry Christmas. I hope you have a great holiday with your family and friends and have a very safe one. Um, and yeah, Merry Christmas from my family to yours. Again, thank you all so much for all of your support, not just not just in you know the stuff that i talked about today but just thank you for your support in general thank you for watching my videos for liking for commenting for subscribing and sticking around just thank you so much for including me in your news feed like for including me in your subscription feed yeah if you haven't already give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you want to see more like it and subscribe to my channel and i hope you guys have a very very merry christmas and i'll see you on my next one mm -hmm.